Okay, so today we're going to finish chapter 6 um, and we're going to talk about the central limit theorem. Now the central limit theorem allows us to uh, use the normal curve when something isn't normally distributed. And we can do this on a couple of occasions and if the population is greater than 30, so when we take sample means, we continue to take all the sample means of populations greater than 30, the sample means will be normally distributed. So therefore, knowing this, we can then use the central limit theorem, which allows us to use the z-curve. If our populations are less than 30, but we know that it's normal, then our sample means will be normal. However, if our populations are less than 30 and it is not normal, then we cannot use the central limit theorem. Now, when we use the central limit theorem, the mean is still going to be mu, but the standard deviation is now going to be calculated as the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And that's going to be important because you're going to be using that in your um, homework and then in hypothesis testing. So, um, we can use those inf that information because now we know we assume that the uh, sample, the distribution of sample means are normal, we can use the z-score, so we're going to use um, this particular formula of z is equal to x bar minus mu, so our x, our, the mean of our x's, to minus mu over the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So again, we've added this square root of n in here to our um, z-score formula. We can then use this information to do hypothesis testing. So we will use, we're, I'll show you this in class, but basically what it is is we're looking to find um, the chance of something being out of the range. And so we're usually looking for something very small, so very small things are less than 5%. So therefore, if we get into these 95%, um, we'll look up 95%, we'll find the um, critical values of the two standard deviations, and therefore um, anything outside of that will uh, fail in hypothesis testing, and I'll show you uh, some of this. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the normal curve, which we're going to use to approximate the binomial distribution. Now, we can do this if and only if uh, n times p, so the number of things we have times the probability is greater than 5, and n times 1 minus p, or n times q, is also greater than or equal to 5. So if both of those things are true, we can then use the uh, normal distribution, the z-curve, you with a mu equal to n times p, and a standard deviation of equal to the square root of n times p times q. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to uh, calculate the normal distribution um, using the central limit theorem uh, in Excel. So first I'm going to show you the one that we did last week where we didn't have the central limit theorem, we had just the normal distribution. So remember we go to uh, function and that will bring up our list here and it's normal.dist okay, which allows us to have our um, values here. And I can just actually click in and go, okay, x is this one, the mean is this one, and the standard deviation is this one. Now, I could actually use the central limit theorem on this first one because if I divide by the square root of 1, I still get 1. So it really doesn't affect it. What will happen is when I go to uh, later ones, um, when I go to the problem B, it will affect it. So but I will show you with it and without it, and then you can see. True. Don't forget the true. And then click OK. And so we find that the probability of finding one person who had a pregnancy that lasted 260 days is 0.2969. Now, in problem B, it asks us, well, we have a sample of 25 uh, mothers who have a mean of 260. What's the probability of that occurring? So because we have a group, we still just use the normal distribution because we're using the central limit theorem. And we have this for the mean, 
and that's the population mean. Here's our standard deviation, but now remember we have to divide by the square root of n. So divided by n square root is SQRT of n. And true. So hit OK. And now we get our 0 0.00383. So, and I can show you that if I do this one using the same formula here, um, I'll just copy it back over here, it hasn't changed. I'm dividing by the square root of n, but in this case n is 1, so it hasn't actually affected it. So um, we're looking at really the means of a group. Well, the mean of a group of a single person is just that value, whereas the mean of a group of people comes out to be, you know, we have, it does affect the standard deviation. Now in problem C, it says, is this, you know, something to be concerned about? Well, because it's such a small value, it's less than 0.05. Um, so yes, this is something we should uh, tell the, the doctors or nurses should be concerned about and uh, look into. So that's how you do problem number 12 on page 267 using Excel. Um, I'm now going to show you how to use it on the TI-83 in a minute. So to do the uh, normal distribution in on your calculator, second variables, normal CDF, now we have to put a bottom value, so zero, because that's the lowest uh, number of days you can have for pregnancy, I'm assuming. Uh, our value that we're looking at, which is 260. Our mean, population mean, which is 268. And our standard deviation of 15, and hit enter. And we found that finding one person with a um, Pregnancy lasted 260 days is a 29.69% chance. So now to do it with um, the central limit theorem, which is problem B, we bring back our, our problem and we're going to divide 15 by our n. So divided by the square root of n, which is 25. And we hit enter. And again, we find that it's 0 0.0038. So again, a very small chance of that occurring. So this is all you have to do. Remember, normal CDF, lower value, your x value, your mean, and your standard deviation. If you're using the central limit theorem, lower value, your x bar, your mean, and your standard deviation divided by the square root of n.